Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. I am your caster for the match, Crick Chronic War Catalyst, and this is the 2015 season, week 6. I am excited to be here, um, and I believe you guys will be enjoying this pick ban phase as uh, we're going to go through this in the right order here. Um, give us a lot to talk about, but first let me introduce our teams for the match here. On the blue side, we will have Microsoft One O N E. Unfortunate, I know. I always, you know how much I love the pun name, so I'm going to be rooting against the blue side here, <laughs> just to let you know my bias up front. Um, they are spawning on the blue side, of course. Microsoft, uh, a company that made this lovely OS. I'm running to actually stream this game to you viewers and upload it later to you uh, who watch it on YouTube. The charity they are playing for is Charity Water. Charity Water. Uh, is a charity that tries to build clean water infrastructure in parts of the world that uh, don't have access to uh, clean water, as the name would imply. Um, so they try and find areas uh, where the local population actually has to walk for an exceedingly long period of time just to get a starting base amount of water for their day. Um, they try and find if there's any way to bring water purification uh, technology to that area. Uh, to try and make it so they can have a more local source source of water, or if they actually do have a local source of clean water like a well, but just don't have the well up and running, um, they will actually help get that infrastructure in place so that that local community can have access to the most basic thing for life for us as humans, water. Um, and they are up against, on the red side, uh, Google AdWords. So, you see why I'm actually rooting for the red side here, right? I mean, Google AdWords, like, that's a thing they use to search and put up ads and Google A-D-D-W-A-R-D-S, like, you need more wards on the map for vision, like, oh, so good. You know how I love it. But anyways, they are playing for, <laughs> of course, Google infamous search engine website, of course. Um, and they are playing for the charity Against Malaria. Against Malaria as the name would imply, is a charity that tries to help fight the spread of malaria. It's one of the uh, largest diseases, largest preventable diseases um, that we have in the world. Uh, it's the number one killer for a lot of demographics of people uh, when you look at the global perspective. And it can be uh, stopped with things as simple as having a lot of nets up to prevent, uh, of course, mosquitoes, which are the primary carrier of malaria, uh, from getting into your system uh, when they actually try and suck your blood. So, uh, they, the main thing that they do is they go around and just go to those areas where they're at high risk of malaria and make sure, um, especially mothers who are pregnant, have proper access to thorough netting that doesn't actually let any mosquitoes in and doesn't have any holes or any tears in it or anything like that. Um, and they're doing a lot uh, to try and prevent that spread of what should be a disease that we have moved beyond as a population by now. So, they do great work. I'm glad to see both of these charities here coming out. Um, but now let's look at this delicious pick band phase here. We do have for the blue side, Tristana, Talon, and LeBlanc coming out as the bands. And for the red side, Jax, Vi, and Pantheon coming out as the bands. Um, now, Tristana uh, was a bit of a targeted band. Um, Jax being the most targeted band in this pick band phase. Um, I'm actually not quite sure where the Talon was coming from. Uh, if they did have the Cassidin in mind, they might have banned out that Talon thinking that they were going to get the Cassidin and then maybe uh, followed that up with the LeBlanc ban just to sort of feign that they weren't really interested in Cassidin. <laughs> but um, as we see, the first pick Cassidin, so we do know uh, that they did have quite the interest in Cassidin. And overall, this is a very interesting team composition. Um, technically, with the double ignites here, um, we do not know uh, which side will be, or which uh, uh, champion here will be going into the support role, though I do believe it will most likely be Viger. We've actually seen a lot of Viger starting with that Relic Shield, so they can uh, continue to Q-farm up their ability power while they're in the laning phase without uh, detracting anything from the AD carry. So we might see that build come out from this Viger. Of course, with a typical AP support, it's a lot more um, common to see the Spell Thief's Edge coming out. Um, 
of uh, the support item for the game. Uh, but we might see a little so something a little spicy in this game. Um, before we uh, dip away from the screen for a moment, I do want to uh, emphasize that this Jinx is Jinx, excuse me, is running cleanse. Uh, the reason that's done is specifically because whoever ends up becoming the support for this game, whether it is Ari or Viger, that uh, charm and the Viger stun uh, both last for so long, especially with the Ari charm actually displacing you towards her for a little while. That cleanse is going to be absolutely necessary on this Jinx, um, who's going to need uh, a chance to get out of where she's at. Um, and that cleanse will help her do so, especially with the Nidalee traps um, being littered around the map as they frequently are now. Uh, we do have to note that the Nidalee traps only snare the monsters, I believe, uh, not actual champions, though they do provide vision. So, uh, as we see Nidalee starting her queue here, um, it looks like we're going to have some pings coming out for both sides here uh, as they're looking to get a little invade. Uh, going from this red side. But overall, um, I do want to uh, point out as well, we see a Nivea taking the heal here. Uh, that's a, actually a in very interesting combination for your bottom lane if you are going to have uh, your AD carry go something like cleanse to try and protect them. Uh, you might want to have uh, the heal still in the bottom lane as Nidalee will spot out this invade coming in here. will throw out the ward and actually will get it down. It will actually get taken out though. So good award kill there. That that one seeth the advantage. <laughs> um, but yeah, it looks like with the flash start um, uh, on Anivia, uh, that will be Anivia mid lane, of course, with the Janus support. Um, I just like to dream of uh, the Anivia supports as they used to be. Um, but it will be uh, the Spell Thief's Edge Vire uh, coming out here instead of that. So. We will have to keep an eye on this bottom lane to see if Viger will be Q farming to try and get that AP, or if he's just going to go uh, full utility Viger and rely on having um, a lot of uh, AP coming out from this red side here with the Kale, with the Anivia, uh, and even some enough with the Janna to try and make sure that his ultimate will be able to do a very significant chunk of damage uh, and really chunk out people. Uh, in these team fights to make sure that they do go favorably uh, for this blue side here. We do see, of course, that the pact has been taken uh, between Viger and Callista here. Uh, not the worst choice, um, as we actually see Viger and Callista are going to get to lane a little bit late. Not going to be starting the uh, Krugs here. Uh, just going to be getting uh, to lane a little bit late. And Jinx going to be hanging out here. Does not know where they are. She sees them enter into lane. Uh, she's going to be here. And we do see Viger already taking one CS here. Um, going to be farming up that Q as much as he can, it seems like. So we will keep our eyes peeled there. Overall, it looks like um, fairly typical starts here for both teams. We have Renekton going for that long sword, so uh, a little bit... Um, well, of course, while still being aggressive... Not as aggressive uh, as the Doran's Blade would have been. Going to look to try and just build that up into an item as quickly as possible. As we see some really aggressive zoning from that Jinx. Uh, unfortunately, Ari tanking a turret shot there. But getting a lot of damage down onto that Anivia. Looks like overall that Viger uh, will actually not be uh, farming up his Q. He was just taking that first one because Callista was unfor unfortunately uh, out of lane here. Actually going to miss the stun there. Uh, perhaps trying to zone away a little bit with it, but uh, Callista is still taking quite a bit of damage. Uh, luckily that was before the level 2 came over to this red side, otherwise that trade would have been even more unfavorable. And actually landing the star charm is Ari and... Kale, gonna, no, does not have the heal available. Gonna go down to that last tick of Ignite here. And looking at this Ari for just a moment, that is a blue buff Ari now. That's gonna be absolutely monstrous for this middle lane. Uh, of course, Kale, so, uh, actually, as we see the bottom lane here, that Ignite gonna come out from Viger, and that will not be enough? No, it won't. The Janus Shield gonna be enough to keep that Jinx alive. Just barely, though. Very close. 
Um, great pressure here in this bottom lane, but of course, uh, Kale coming into lane with that blue buff on her, um, simply because uh, she wanted to try and get an early gank out. Of course, being Kale, gonna start blue to make sure she has the mana uh, able to get that for early gank off. Uh, but when it goes poorly like that, I mean, that's the result. We got a Ari in the mid lane with a blue buff, so that's gonna be disastrous here. We see uh, forcing that um, Anivia to chug through all those flash charges, even eat up all her biscuits, just to try and maintain an equal amount of health here with the Ari, uh, who does still have quite an advantage in lane right now. Uh, we see that. Uh, hold that thought for just a moment. Oh, beautiful shot on Viger actually landing that AoE damage onto both. Uh, the Janna and the Jinx, but gotta be careful this Kalista getting a little bit aggressive with her hopping around there Taking a bit too many shots from that Jinx, so she's gonna have to be a lot more careful now And if they want to keep fighting off of the Viger stuns, they gotta be ready for the stun to end and get the heck out of dodge Great charms onto this Anivia from this Ari, absolutely monstrous, and again what I was trying to say earlier, with that blue buff, um, in addition to the just outright damage, great zoning with the uh, uh, possible stun there from Viger, actually taking quite a bit of damage though, both of them are very low, but so is Jinx, getting the Ren stacks in though, actually dying to the Ren, not even needing this Nidalee, who will finish up the Janna with that spear, there it is, boom, that was delicious, the heat seeking spear, but yeah, Jinx, Stepping a little bit too far forward, trying to get the last hits uh, onto that Kalista, not realizing she had uh, the two Ren stacks already in her. Kalista was able to throw just a couple more stacks in there and then get the kill onto her uh, by rending those out and doing just enough damage to finish that off. We're going to have Kale come in, uh, going to have to be zoned away by the Viger here. Uh, but just to make sure that the Kalista does realize she cannot farm the rest of this lane uh, out before Jinx returns. Um, but overall that will be a uh, kill onto this Callista uh, with an assist as well. Two assists for that Viger support and one kill onto the Nidalee. So early uh, advantage going over heavily to this blue side here. 3-0. to oh, No turrets taken yet. Uh, but with the CS uh, so largely uh, identical over here. Um, aside from uh, that Jinx and Anivia who are both now falling behind thanks to those deaths. Um, of course Anivia uh, not really dying herself, but dealing with that blue buff is like dying. <laughs> um, we will see them answer here with an uncontested early dragon, though. So getting that extra little boost of uh, uh, damage and ability power uh, as well. Attack damage and ability power. Uh, that percentage boost that that first day dragon does grant will make it so... Uh, that this team will be able to continue to contend here. Actually going to throw down the Dominus, uh, but... Rift walking away is that Cassidy. Cassidy, of course, trying to ramp up as much as possible. Gonna have to avoid fighting uh, like he did there, as he has only the Catalyst built uh, alongside that flask right now. So, uh, gonna have to try and farm from a bit of ways here uh, to not take too much damage from that uh, Renekton, who does now have the Spirit Visage. And actually almost going down to just the spears. This Kale gonna heal, but it looks like it'll be enough. Nidalee perhaps going a little bit too far with the stun potential from Anivia and the ult. And the block. Beautiful Anivia wall there. Gonna be getting that Nidalee kill. Some great plays there by Anivia. Good zoning using that wall. Actually placing down her ultimate in an area where she could uh, apply damage that whole time. And even there, just as we saw for a moment, uh, put down that uh, uh, ultimate to where she wouldn't uh, hit the most forward minion that was tanking the turret shot, so she could just last hit the t uh, front uh, uh, melee minion there and get that entire wave cleaned up with her ultimate during the meantime. Clearly some expert Anivia play here. We gotta watch this Jinx though. Jinx gonna be ulted by Kale with only 20 hit points left. Very close to death there. The kill actually not really blocking out any damage. So that could have been a death going over to this uh, blue side here. But luckily for the red team, gonna get away. But actually does not have the Viger ultimate anymore because he did use it on the Jinx. So that's gonna be kill getting away even though she's taking very low too. But now with the turret shot coming in onto this blue, so they're gonna have to play 
a little bit less aggressive in this bottom lane now. I'm probably just going to push out this wave and then back back off here uh, to go invest some of that gold. They do have uh, the early BF sword, uh, but that will be enough gold to get that pickaxe. As we see, Renekton actually trading uh, shot for shot here with this Kassadin, uh forcing him to turn his attention to the Renekton. Uh, going to be uh, making him miss a little bit of CS here. The Janin shield saving the life of that turret, really. And then it looks like i uh, going to opt to stay in this lane to try and get that last little bit of damage on the turret. And Jinx um, predicting here that the Ari is going to come uh, as they do not have the ward except for right here. Um, they will eventually get zoned away um, and will go down here. Uh, will be the bottom turret. So first turret of the game over to this blue side here. Calista actually gonna look to keep going. Nidalee almost getting the steal there. She had uh, just perhaps pounced a little bit forward. Uh, Kale did not have her uh, smite up, so could have smited that red buff away. Unfortunately, not gonna be the case here. Uh, as Kale will get that buff and head on home. Ari gonna be spawning out this pink ward. Good catch there. As Anivia trying to move around here. Uh, Nivia, we do see, of course, going for that tier and Rod of Ages start here with the Catalyst. As the Dominus is thrown down, but not going to be close enough to get damage onto that Cassidy. Uh, but, of course, so this Nivia going to take a little while to ramp up. But when she does, once she completes those two items into the Rod of Ages that's stacked up uh, and uh, the AP tier item, once that's stacked up as well, as the ultimate is actually thrown down, Viger actually does land uh, the knockup and the stun as well. But with the teleport coming in from Renekton, and the Janna Tornado actually does land on Callista, so gonna force the flash, but gonna be able to chase her is Renekton as his flash is up. Uh, and where is the Jinx ultimate? Oh, not actually six is the Jinx yet. And Nidalee going in trying to get a little bit of answer, but actually gonna jump right into the Anivia damage and a turret shot for her trouble. Gonna be missing uh, just that last little bit of damage on all three of them actually. But there's the Jinx ultimate coming out, just barely healing out of range is that Nidalee. And Viger trying to provide what uh, cover he can here. Actually, good charm again onto that Kale. Uh, we see a lot of prowess from these mid laners on their uh, Nivea and Ari, actually landing quite a bit of those tricky skill shots uh, and zoning particularly well from the Nivea. Um, So we see Kale gonna just barely be able to clear that out. Actually gonna look to shoo that Viger away. Um, does have the ultimate up, so if Kale came out a little bit forward, he might have been able to combo her down. Uh, but actually, Kale gonna think better of it. Just throw on the one, get out of here, I have red buff auto attacks. <laughs> Uh, and walk away from that without risking too much. Uh, we do see the score getting a little bit more even now, uh, as it is three to two, of course, uh, with that kill onto Renekton, onto Anivia. Um, we do see Renekton also uh, finally upgrading that longsword into the Brutalizer here, so he will get a lot more damage coming out. Uh, not quite sure exactly what his first item is going to be. It looks like he's going for a lot of uh, first tier items here, or excuse me, second tier items here. Uh, before he actually completes a full item. Uh, and is going to just try and have a little bit of resistance for everybody, a little bit of survivability um, to maximize when he throws on that Dominus so he can just run in and not have to be worried by uh, worried about being melted by Calista, uh, who got an early kill here. Trying to pull out the dragon, but actually not juggling that aggro properly to pull it out. And actually taking a lot of damage to start this off is that Renekton. So he's going to be chunked very far out. And Kale getting stunned, absolutely blown up! From that Viger stun, unfortunately going to miss the charm there. Uh, but Kassadin gonna ult in, get a little bit of damage. Uh, that dragon is pretty low right now. They do have a uh, vision of it, but with the Callista run, that will be enough. Actually, Kassadin coming in, going very aggressive, doesn't have the Rift Lock up yet, so not able to finish off uh, that very low Jinx. But he will zone them away, and if they do see, yes, that is Nidalee seeing that blue buff is up. So they will be taking the blue buff for their trouble. Uh, and might actually get the mid lane turret off of this rotation as well. As we see Nidalee 
uh, actually did secure that blue buff there. Janna trying her best to contend with that, uh, but being the Janna she is, is really unable to <laughs> beat out a Nidalee who has smite. Um, actually going to walk right by that pink ward is this blue team, unfortunately for them. Uh, but it looks like Renekton will probably be able to get this top turret here, so uh, that will be the first turret of the game going over to this red side. Uh, if he can get the last shot in, it looks like he'll be able to cast it. I'm not going to try and contest that here. Going to play it a little safe. He does have uh, the Rod of Ages built. Um, we see a lot of castings not going for uh, the star we have here uh, being played out by Anivia, where you get uh, the tier and the catalyst uh, that eventually builds into the rod. Um, uh, it's typically a little bit too greedy to try and get that much of a uh, late game scaling item. It kind of uh, prolongs your uh, power trough uh, in the early game, which is makes you too vulnerable, but we see uh, this Anivia putting on an absolute clinic of how to uh, be in a power trough and get kills <laughs> with some really expert play here. So all kudos to this Anivia, uh, but overall again, uh, as they will spot out that ward here, um, that is a, an advantage still going over to this blue side here of about three and a half gold right now. Three and a half thousand gold. <laughs> three and a half gold. That would not be very much of an advantage. Um, but yeah, bringing out uh, those early kills uh, and out rotating a little bit uh, to get those early towers, um, perhaps most critically the towers that are on the bot side as well. So they are towers that will be uh, playing into these dragon fights here later in the game. So uh, overall, uh, that those dragons might start to fall in the blue side's favor here. As we do see, of course, the dragons are right now one for one. So with that evened up, it's going to be a large uh, tale of who can uh, get these next dragons and try and get to those critical stacks. We see, it uh, looks like they know Jinx is hanging around there. They're not quite sure exactly where, uh, but they're going to try and spot her. They're going to decide to back off as that is Fog of War here. They do see the Jinx still hanging around. They're, all, they're, they're getting peeks of everybody now, so they will uh, decide to play a little safe. Casting and going a little aggressive, actually, as I say that. Uh, but he does have the ability to, of course, rift walk on out of there as soon as he wants to, so... Gonna throw down a little bit of that AoE slow and just hang around, try and zone some people off. Actually gonna go hard on this uh, Kayla who throws on her ultimate, so it does prevent some damage. And actually with the uh, teleport coming in as well, he's gonna... No! Oh, sidesteps the Jinx ultimate! And as soon as Kale Oh, Kale was not able to turn on her E there and could not get the last auto attack onto that castle, and so he will be making it out of, his, out of there with his life, but the same will not be said for Kale, who does go down to the Viger with his ultimate and the stun, so he can land those skill shots, and trying to get a kill on the way out is Ari, uh, realizing that she was going down, uh, trying to make a valiant effort there. Uh, so overall, that will be one for one, but during the uh, meantime here, this middle lane turret taking quite a bit of damage, actually not dead yet. And it looks like Anivia will be able to get these minions off of her front line here. So that will be the middle turret saved by the Anivia. As we see the spooky ghost dying out in the jungle here. Um, but yeah, so that was an uh, inner turret in the middle lane taken out here going over to this blue side so now overall the score is four for one all the outer turrets gone and that middle uh inner turret dead as well for this blue side uh in favor of this blue side i should say so as this pink war gets cleared out here um throwing down the tornado just in case somebody wanted to chase her try and punish her for that pink ward kill um, but overall, that gold advantage is what's really uh, working in favor of the blue side here. Uh, minor kill advantage, um, but overall, what's helping them, uh, because the kill participation for this red side has been very uh, strong here. They've been involving a lot of people to make sure those assists get spread around. Actually landing the spear, going to be able to pounce up to this uh, Kale, who will throw on the ultimate. Not stunned right now, but between the uh, Ignite and the Nidalee. That's going to be enough damage to finish her off. Especially when you land that Spear to the face. Good zoning there being used by this Viger. 
and all of a sudden we might have to see a very unusual band uh, in the Viger support coming out in future games here. We do actually see Viger uh, ended up trading that back in and went with the coin here uh, to upgrade it to that Talisman of Ascension. Uh, just went with the Spell Thief's Edge for that early harassment power uh, and ambient gold gain here. As you see, a lot of trading back and forth actually going in favor of this Kassim now that he does have that rod stacking. It is up to uh, 14 stacks. So Renekton gonna have to be careful. Oh, actually, Ari gonna spirit rush in and with the last turn shot, no, that's no, that will be enough with the burn uh, from the scale. So Ari gonna be punished for uh, going in and being the one to tank those turret shots as opposed to casting it uh, a little bit tankier with that rod. So he's going to be able to, they do need to juggle that turret aggro a little bit better next time if they're going to want to execute a dive like that. But uh, overall, that still is a one for one. So uh, extending this lead um, is the blue side um, as they were able to get a little extra uh, kill participation in there with the assist going over to Cassidy. But the blue side, or excuse me, the red side will secure this blue buff. It is warded, but they're actually going to go try and contest the dragon straight here. But so many Ren sacks in that will just be a straight up Ren kill for the Callista. No smite needed. Uh, and Cassidy actually trying to take the blue buff was not able to. Uh, was very close though, but that blue buff did go over to. Uh, was that Jinx? Who was that? It actually did go to the ideal target here of Anivia, getting that fresh blue buff. So she will be able uh, to use that ultimate quite a bit to wave clear. We do see uh, more pink wards coming out uh, from this blue team being pretty aggressive with their warding. And I, got, I gotta say, it's paying off for them. When we look very quickly here at the vision, we see insanely deep wards for this blue side here. And the red side has been forced to ward defensively in their own jungle. So, uh, I mean, even... As we see, Kale actually not going to go down here. Um, Viger not going to throw out the ultimate there. Not confident in that. Even with Nidalee around. Oh, Nidalee actually going to have to flash over that wall so she doesn't die here. Um, like I was saying, this might have been a misclick here. <laughs> but uh, this ward was certainly not. Um, they're warding very defensively in their own jungle here is the red side. So playing it uh, very safe. As close to gonna try and take that red buff, but gonna be zoned away as she is a little low. Actually, gonna pay for her life. She does miss the flash. Overestimated it just a bit, but she did start the ultimate so Viger uh, could get over that wall and get out. So, Hero Callista actually saving the Viger, but will go down herself as she missed the flash. Uh, possibly could have saved both of them, or at least forced flashes out of this red side to pursue that, but... That uh, will be another kill going over to this red side. De definitely needed kill here. Actually, Cassidy uh, rift walking just a second too late there, so he rift walks with the stun um, from that Anivia. Almost a good play there. Uh, able to get a lot of damage in, but just not quite able to. Um, as I was saying earlier, we do see uh, that Cassidy going for the Zonia's Hourglass second um, instead of the tier, so. Anivia, as that tier is stacking up, um, not quite uh, within range yet of the upgrade. But once once we certainly do uh, th get these stacks going all the way up for this Anivia, she will become quite a nightmare. Um, as she will be able to use that ultimate uh, all the time uh, and be able to use those abilities in very good combination with them to stick you into that ultimate for as long as possible, especially uh, as these dragons are going to be coming up here. Uh, those Anivia ultimates are going to be very critical as far as uh, the engagements are going to be decided. But you see, Cass or, excuse me, Renekton uh, often to get that Banshee's Veil early. Uh, good use of that um, specifically to avoid the charms uh, and virus stones, but going toe-to-toe -to -toe here is this Kale. Um, with that red buff, uh, tempting fate here with Cassidy, uh, as he does not have the mana uh, to really use his abilities effectively. They're gonna have to be have his recall interrupted momentarily by the Jana knockup. Um, Renekton going a little deep here, gonna force the Talisman of Ascension to be popped from this Viger, uh, who does land a good two-person stun, but they are not able to follow up on it. Uh, just able to get out of range there. 
Getting some good harassment uh, onto that Renekton, but that does leave this uh, Callista up in the middle lane. But unfortunately for her, Nivea is there. Absolutely able to just point blank annihilate her. Uh, if you get within a Nivea, make it easy to land those skill shots. That is what will happen to you, especially if you're low health. Uh, Nivea will punish you hard. Um, she does have that egg up, I believe. And not even going to need it. Just destroying that Nidalee. Even with the Renekton and Janna around, she did not get any help from them. Um, so... Here comes Anivia. <laughs> um, with those two additional kills on her. Um, and the Seraph's Embrace almost uh, stacked up here. It's just 140 stacked shy now. Or excuse me, that is some silly math. <laughs> it's just 190 stacked shy. Uh, sub 200 now. Uh, that will be a very scary Anivia here soon. Uh, especially when she has blue buff on her like she does now. So uh, taking down this mid turret here. Uh, are the Anivia and Renekton. So that will be a uh, two to four turrets uh, overall. Uh, but the main uh, thing that's giving this gold advantage over to the blue side uh, has become no longer uh, the middle lane as the Anivia has caught quite a ways back up, um, almost even with her lane opponent, uh, is actually the top in middle lane. Renekton, uh, with the amount of roaming he's been doing to try and cover for his team, uh, as he was the one to have those uh, first few excuse me, the first few kills onto him, able to trade with this Renekton, get, or able to trade with this castle and going to be just fine. Um, but he was roaming around quite a bit, so he did fall behind in that CS overall uh, to this castle, and he's now about uh, a little bit over 50 CS ahead of him. Um, but perhaps more critically than that even, is this Callista, who despite having two more deaths than Jinx, has almost double the CS that Jinx does. Um, nearly 100 CS in the lead of her. Uh, and it shows from the already completed uh, uh, Berserker Greaves boots here, Tier 2 boots and the Runons, whereas Jinx only has the Boots of Swede and this Vampiric Scepter. So the backline um, being compromised for this red side is going to mean a lot less, and protecting it as well is going to mean far less than it should. So this looks like it actually will be this dragon going down, not going to be able to be contested here, and that will be the third dragon critically uh, for this blue side here. So with that extra movement speed on an already very mobile team with the Kassadin and Ari, Callista, um, Liger well, not necessarily hyper mobile himself, but will make you immobile. Um, going to be able to really punish the this red side, especially with that Talisman of Ascension on the Viger, so there's always going to be extra mobility going around, so let's keep our eyes out here for the picks, so we're going to be looking for the Viger catches, for the Ari charm catches, and uh, oh, just barely misses uh, the charm there, on to actually do get that uh, that ward as well, uh, but misses the charm onto this uh, beautiful uh, Janna here. As we see the spear chunking out about half of Kale's life, uh, and the Viger uh, actually taking a shot to the face from that Anivia, going to be able. So many wards here, my goodness. Uh, not even going to be able to clear out that last ward. Uh, but in the meantime, they will be pushing up this middle lane. Going to throw down a sweeper just to clear it out for good measure here. Uh, and throw the spooky ghost out to make sure uh, they've got some vision coverage here. But it looks like, largely, this jungle is actually owned by the blue side now. There's a lot of wards coming out from the red side to keep being able to contest it as they are, to keep those kills even, to keep this pressure up. Uh, Kassadin forced to riff walk away, but here comes Viger with the Jinx ultimate. Not going to be enough. Going to be able to pop the Talisman of Sentry and get people out of there. Um, but that will be the Jinx ultimate. Uh, for essentially nothing, just a talisman of ascension. So, uh, it's, it's minor advantage here. The cooldown on that ultimate is not super high, so it will probably be up uh, in the next time she needs it. But uh, we'll see uh, if they are a pretty aggressive um, team here for this blue side. If they continue that, we'll see uh, whether or not that Jinx ultimate is actually going to come into play. Or the lack thereof, I should say. Actually, going to spot out this ward as soon as it's placed is uh, this Nidalee. Good 
uh, invasion into the jungle, always smiting uh, onto those razor beaks, always uh, using uh, that passive sensing of the wards uh, as much as she can to keep an eye on this jungle, keep trying to deny that vision as much as possible so they can set up for the picks. Actually, gonna pop this Houseman of Ascension, but behind is the flanking Kale, who's just with the flash gonna be able to finish him off. And uh, Nidalee, who's busy, a little distracted by the razor beaks there, not able to throw out the spear and hop into the action. So that will be a free kill. Um, Anivia gonna have to back off here though. Ooh, just gonna miss the spear there, is Nidalee. But yeah, with that, that will be another kill going over to this red side. Definitely needed kills. Again, they are still behind in gold by about uh, 6k right now. A very significant gold deficit here. Uh, largely, again, from the CS advantage, which continues to grow, at least for the bottom lane. Uh, only two sh CS short of a 100 uh, CS lead in the bottom lane. That Callista gonna continue to be an absolute monster while Jinx gonna take even longer to scale up into that late game she really needs. So definitely not what you want to see for the red side here. Uh, that is the majority of the gold deficit. Um, of course the global gold from those turrets helping out as well. But yeah, especially when you're the team that has less dragons, you gotta hope uh, that you're able to at least get some extra uh, pressure on those creep waves uh try and get those waves working in your for in your favor here uh creating opportunities to out rotate the enemy team here Viger a little bit too far forward gonna be forced to flash there but with Nidalee in tow he will be okay she'll be able to heal him right on up um but that will be the Viger flash down so that will not be any Viger flash engages here uh reminiscent of the infinite Annie engage uh to start things off so he's going to be uh, a little bit uh, more vulnerable. And here's that vulnerability coming into play. Going to go down with that Renekton and Anivia. Great wall placement by that Anivia again. Very nice to see Expert play on a champion we don't frequently see these days. Uh, in that Anivia, who is 4-0-1 right now. With that fully stacked... Uh, I believe that's a fully stacked rod. It is, but hold that thought here. Has the cast and bitten off a little bit more than he can chew? Actually, it's Callista jumping forward. Uh, going to pop the Dominus to make sure he doesn't die to those Ren stacks. Is Renekton, so forcing the ultimate there, but um, overall, good trades back and forth as they start to fight here around this Dragon Pit to try and get the uh, control of this vision. Having to fight for vision within their own jungle uh, is this red side, as we do see uh, that crab is timing out. Oh, but actually, let's jump back here very quickly to see Kale. This is going to be very critical here, as Kale is the one with the smite here. Looks like she was actually trying to go back in vision, and Ari. No, gonna just land a beautiful charm onto her. Oh, that is just painful to watch. Just. Predicting the movements too well. Um, Kale trying to go a little bit of a different path, hug the wall a little bit more, but uh, actually predicting that is this Ari who's gonna be able to pick up the kill onto Kale, and that will mean their jungler is down for what is another 15 seconds, and the dragon is live. Cassidy gonna be chased out of that bush a little bit. Um, taking a little bit of extra time here. Actually gonna be forced to zone you as is Cassidy, who's gonna be able to rift walk out of that danger zone. Um, but gonna keep coming back in actually. Getting a little bit too aggressive. Um, but in the meantime, that will be Callista able to take out the dragon here. Clearing up that upgraded scrying war uh, scrying orb ward. Uh, on the retreat here as they did get their fourth dragon now again critically that is the fourth dragon for this blue side we are entering the danger zone right now um, any dragons that come after that fourth dragon are going to be absolutely devastating for this red side uh, as we see the global gold continuing to extend as Cassidy now starting to press that CS advantage as well uh, Overall, 
the lanes have really uh, kept up with one another from the last time we spoke about this, but Kassin has been starting to run away, so it looks like the blue side always managing to keep people even, but then one player is able to just start to edge out the CS advantage. Um, right now it looks to be like her Necton's going to be the one falling a little bit more behind. Kale actually able to walk for more than a couple seconds without running into an immediate ward uh, inside of her jungle. Um, not going to pop the Banshee's Veil. Uh, is Nidalee there. Not even going to waste that. But Spear rushing in is Ari going to be able to force the egg. How much damage will they have though? That's not a very untanky Anivia. She does have the completed rod, but that will be Anivia going down in that passive egg. Good Ren there. Actually not going to be enough to finish her off though. Uh, but in that passive, she's not able to uh, use the active of this uh, Seraph's Embrace. Just chasing her. Going to be able to chase her with the mobility. Insane is Callista. Going to use the heal just to make sure she gets out of here. I, I, sorry, people, but we got to watch that one more time. Callista using the jump on the minions to outpace Jinx. Now remember, they do have the same tier boots, they do move, actually Jinx moving a little bit faster with that zeal as this Yomu's was not popped, um, so she didn't have the extra move speed, that was just raw um, kite like popping, uh, able to get her that kill, uh, and in the meantime this is uh, a middle lane inhibitor going down after Kale is killed as well, and with the base crack now, that global gold lead uh, and two inhibitors going down. This is probably gonna be the game going over to this blue side here despite that deceptively close kill score. Jinx actually gonna throw out the ultimate not realizing uh, that this dragon is already gone. Only gonna hit the Nidalee here. Distract her for just a moment. Actually gonna be forced to cancel that recall again as Janna being a pest there. Uh, good play, of course, from Janna. Continuing to just harass out that ADC as much as she can. Um, but, I mean, barring some uh, huge swing back, I mean, 12.5k lead right now in gold. Going over to this blue side here. Absolutely monstrous CS advantage. Cassid, 100 gold in the lead. Uh, Callista, more than 100 gold in the lead. Every lane having the CS advantage. Aside from the support, which is insignificant <laughs> as a support main, I have the right to say that. Um, but yeah, of course, uh, the the items that that's translated into. I mean, uh, despite being a largely AP team, Callista has been able to get some kills uh, onto her uh, name there as well. So she will be a threat. And with that, uh, Runon's Hurricane coming out, that is everybody having to worry about the AD threat. So not able to just uh, focus on building MR to try and counter that uh, Cassidy, who's not particularly fed, just farmed up very well. Um, as this Baron is actually going to be started off in vision, Ari going to, oh, actually going to miss the wall there. First time this game we've seen Anivia miss that wall. Um, Callista might actually go down here. No, going to get the last hit uh, is that. Um, Viger here. I'm not sure if that was the Q, but that would be... Always feels good to Q farm a uh, global objective like that. Actually, 1v1ing here is Kale, who's gonna pop the ultimate. And have to run through the base gate here. No, actually gonna follow him with that Q, but Nidalee lurking around, gonna discourage any chasing there. Um, Kale perhaps could have flashed, but that would have been a little bit too thirsty as we see um, this Viger and Ari uh, able with the Baron buff to split push here and take out that last remaining inner turret and actually charmed out is this Anivia who's gonna pop the shield a little bit early on herself doesn't block out anything but a little bit of passive ignite damage Anivia solo right now her egg is up right now so if she does get focused down she will uh, not die actually no the egg was down excuse me and that will be a double kill going over to this Ari and that will be the final inhibitor going down and with that tremendous gold lead actually gonna catch the Renekton 2 Renekton forced to slice away gonna walk back in and take a uh, 
almost all of his health uh, for the trouble there, but that's gonna be the game here as we see the Callista walking into that base, styling and profiling. So great game here from both sides, but unfortunately that CS advantage was the story of the game as uh, the gold leads uh, were not really largely determined by the kills and it turned out just to be a turret advantage that spiraled absolutely out of control. Only two turrets uh, still going over to this red side by the end of the game. Absolutely being shut out of taking those global objectives, denying that global goal. The only objective that this red side was able to get through that entire game was their dragon. Um, very nice to have that first dragon, of course, but you got to have more than that if you're going to want to not fall into such a huge deficit. Again, looking around overall, um, it was that Kale um, who was caught out a couple of times. Uh, actually opted to go for the Blade of the Rune King. A little bit of an unusual build here um, with the uh, um, Devourer upgrade. Still always want to call that what it used to be. Um, but so a little bit of an unusual build path for Kale here going AD um, for the most part. Could have been what caused the difference here, trying out something a little bit different here. Uh, bringing that lifesteal in, uh, trying to combo it with the Devourer upgrade, but it just did not work out this game. Again, that largely probably was determined by that first kill we saw on the Kale by the Ari, who was able um, to just outright uh, blow Kale up um, and get that blue buff onto her lane, which then made this Anivia, who uh, largely stood out, um, almost the most damage dealt on the entire team was Anivia. Um, it really put that Anivia behind, who was able to show up really strong in this game, despite having uh, that bad start against this monster of an Ari, who really just ran away with this game. Um, but overall, um, that is the entire game. Again, that is going over uh, to on the red side to this red team here, who was Google AdWords. Uh, ad wards, excuse me. Um, so that will be the game. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the game. If you, of course, want to watch any more of these games, they will be available at After Hours Gaming's website, or the After Hours Gaming League website, which is uh, displayed on your screen right here. Um, so please give them a check out if you uh, enjoyed the game today. All the schedules for the upcoming matches will be posted there. These games will be uploaded to that site um, and of course you can stay tuned to my youtube channel i will be uploading all the games i cast to this youtube channel and now officially live streaming them so a special shout out to all of our live streamers who hung out with me through this game thank you guys for tuning in and i will see you guys uh, at the next game